How many of our parents, in an attempt to get us to appreciate our toys, talked about the kids on the other side of the world who didn't have any toys and then made a threat that if you don't start sharing your toys, we're going to send them all off to those kids? Hey, everyone. This is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am back today with my good friend, Ginger Hubbard, and we're talking about parenting mistakes. And, you know, I think part of our um, prideful nature as humans is we don't want people to tell us that we're wrong about things. And so maybe this is not something that you're doing. Maybe these are not mistakes that you're making, but maybe these are mistakes that other people make. (laughs) So we'll just say it's not you, it's them. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, but I know, like I said, I've made lots of mistakes in my parenting. And you know what? I will continue to. Everyone has, Ginger has, every parent has, because we're sinful. And there's only one perfect parent, and that is God himself. <laughs> so Amen. We, we strive to be like him, but we are never going to be perfect in all the things. And so we can learn from the mistakes um, of others who have gone before us and maybe um, just take some of this advice and wisdom so that we can, again, live with as few regrets as possible in our parenting journey. So Ginger, thank you for being back with me this week. And uh, I want to thank you guys for being back with us. But before we get back into our conversation, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, BJU Press Homeschool. If you're looking for a great, solid biblical worldview curriculum for any grade, any subject, they've got something for you. Check them out at bjupresshomeschool.com. They have trustworthy resources that support your goals for your children and your style of teaching. So whether you're an independent learning style kind of homeschool parent or a parent-led approach, uh, whatever works best for your family, they've got something for you. bjupresshomeschool.com. They'll be with you every step of the way. You can talk to one of their consultants and they will help walk you through whatever it is that you need. So this time of year, I know lots of you are thinking about what is coming up for next year and what curriculum you need for different subjects. Um, So check them out, bjupresshomeschool.com. Well, Ginger, welcome back to the podcast. Let's talk through um, some more. On Monday, we talked about bribing being Mm -hmm. the one. We only got through one. You said you have six parenting mistakes that you talked through. (laughs) We got through the first one. (laughs) We had a lot to say about that, didn't we? Yeah, we we did. We (laughs) did. Um, Let's talk about... uh, Let's talk about the next one. What is the next um, mistake that you see parents often making? Well, uh, that would be threatening. And this one usually comes after we have repeated our instructions several times to no avail. And so we pull out the big guns with something like, if you don't start sharing your toys right now, I'm going to send them all off to kids who will share. (laughs) And so, but, you know, Yvette, this teaches them that really mom or dad, they do not mean what they say. Mm -hmm. You know, how many of our parents in an attempt to get us to appreciate our toys talked about the kids on the other side of the world who didn't have any toys and then made a threat that if you don't start sharing your toys, we're going to send them all off to those kids. Uh, Probably not too many. And if they did uh, make that threat and follow through, hats off to them because that's not a threat. But that's just an example of the kind of ways that we're tempted to threaten our kids. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't share your toys. I'm going to, throw them all in the trash. I'm going to ship them (laughs) off to Goodwill or take them, you know, somewhere. But um, we need to avoid saying things that we don't mean, because that's really how we get ourselves in a pickle, as we like to say here in the South. Um, If we tell them that there's going to be a consequence, then there needs to be a consequence because if there's not, we're going to cause our children to question our word. Mm -hmm. And if we cry wolf too many times, we'll eventually lose our effectiveness because our kids, um, you know, they're just going to lose respect for our authority. Our children need to have confidence that our word is our word. And when they have that confidence, it actually brings a sense of security in their lives. And, you know, we talked about Yvette uh, yesterday on Monday about sometimes that we blew it, you know, with our kids. We mentioned that, that we're all going to blow it with our kids sometimes. We're all all not going to get it right every single time. And so, you know, even though I'm talking about these six discipline mistakes, um, you know, don't think for one second that I didn't find myself blowing it in some of these areas as well. And, you know, I read all the parenting books when my kids were growing up. I even wrote a couple of them, but I still fell into probably every one of these traps at some point or another. As a matter of fact, I remember one time in particular where I fell into this trap that we're talking about, um, threatening my kids. I homeschooled both of my kids. And one thing that they looked very much forward to every week and that I looked forward to every week was Tuesday nights when they got to spend the night with my parents, who they call Nana and Papa. And so it was Tuesday afternoon. We had finished up the school assignments. I'd been telling them that they needed to get their rooms cleaned up. I'd 
repeated my instruction several times, which is another one we're going to talk about. And they were just not obeying Yvette. They were just procrastinating and just not obeying what I was telling them to do. And instead of dealing with that, I threw out a threat. I said, if you guys don't hurry up and get these rooms cleaned up, you are not spending the night with Nana and Papa tonight. (laughs) But I knew good and well, I wasn't about to forfeit my free night with no kids in order to follow through with that threat. And so that's what I'm talking about. There's throwing out threats that we're not uh, willing to follow through with. Matthew 537 says, simply let your yes be yes and your no be no. That means that we are to say what we mean and mean what we say, or we will exasperate our children. And, you know, really anything other than that is unfair to them because mm-hmm. they don't know when to take us seriously. Right. Proverbs fifteen twenty eight says that we are to weigh our answers. That means that we have to think before we speak. So we need to try not to say yes or no or issue that warning or that command unless we're willing to follow through uh, with uh, with what we're saying. Yeah, I think it's so important to think before we speak. And that's something that I try to remind myself of, and I'm trying to still teach my girls because it's so easy. And this is in any situation. As soon as a thought comes to your mind, it comes out of your mouth and it could be hurtful. It could be, um, you know, it could be a threat that maybe you don't want to make. Um, it, there, there are so many times that we think the wrong things, we think the wrong way, and then we say it. And before it's even done coming out of our mouth, we're like, oh, but wait, come <laughs> yeah. back, come back, back you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't just delete it, you know? Right. Uh, because once it's out there, it's out there. And yeah. so it is, it, that's another important part of self-control, which is, we talked about that on Monday of using self-control. We have to use self-control with our kids in the way that we speak. And so I have a friend actually who, she's so funny. She, and she, I, I don't know, she like trained herself to do this, but her kids would ask her a question and she would always pause and she would always go, hmm, and wait just a second before answering them. And so her kids grew up kind of learning to do that too. That's just kind of part of their family culture. Mm -hmm. But I think she like intentionally taught herself to do that because she didn't want to give a quick answer Mm -hmm. without actually processing her answer first. And that's what that scripture is talking about that I just mentioned. We need to weigh our answers. Well, you can't weigh an answer if it just gushes out of your mouth. Right. Weighing an answer means stopping and thinking right. and saying, hmm, if you need to, yeah. <laughs> like your friend does. <laughs> yeah. I know there's often times where my girls will ask me something and I'll just be like, hmm, I'm not sure. I'll get back to you on that. And yep. then half the time I don't get back to them and they're like, you keep saying that, but then you never get back to us. And <laughs> so I think we also need to be mindful of when we say, I will give you an answer, actually yeah. giving them an answer on right. those things. Yep. You know? yep. So That's good. we have to follow through on that. Um, Okay, what would be another one, another parenting mistake that we make? Well, I actually just mentioned that one, but uh, repeating our instructions. Mm. Um, You know, if you think about it, threatening really is along the same lines as repeating our instructions or going back on our instructions. And these are just traps we don't want to fall into. And, you know, we can even learn things from our children. Uh, My oldest stepson, Hudson, he is a total history buff especially when it comes to battles and war history. And he's really helped me to have a deeper understanding of battle strategies and how our military works. Hmm. And one thing I found really interesting, Yvette, is that when we really look at some of how the most um, successful generals in our country have responded to things, we see that they all had one thing in common with, with one particular strategy. They were all certain of their commands before they issued them. You know, soldiers don't respect or respond well to an uncertain or inconsistent leader, which is interesting because it goes right along with what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, 8. He said, if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound, who will prepare for battle? And I love that because that's how it is in parenting. If we issue half-hearted commands to our children and we don't require them to follow through, we send mixed signals. And that can even cause our children to question their own positions in the family because they become uncertain of when and how to respond to our instructions. When we're uncertain and inconsistent and wishy-washy, as I like to say in our instructions, it can cause our children to be insecure and unsure of their own actions. So we want to strive to lead our children with confidence so that they can find security and stability in their call to obedience. Yeah. So... I want to talk really practically about what this can look like. Um, how how can we go about not having to repeat ourselves every time we instruct our kids to do something? Um, but let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. 
We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and Summit Ministries. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. We are back with Ginger. All right, let's talk, we're, we're talking about repeating instructions and that's really a difficult thing um, because I think sometimes, you know, our kids are like, well, I didn't hear you or whatever. And um, how can we get them to actually listen to what we're saying and respond to it? So walk us through a really practical scenario of how we can go about not having to repeat ourselves every time. Well, one thing I recommend is to make sure uh, that they did hear you. So you're not questioning yourself. Well, did they really not hear me? So don't yell right. instructions from the other end of the house. Go and make eye-to-eye -eye contact and and tell what instructions. You know, maybe a scenario, maybe you're uh, getting ready to go somewhere and you need them to go put their shoes on. Um, you know, honey, we're leaving in five minutes, so go put your shoes on and then go ahead and make them respond so you know that they heard you. So I would, and that also encourages them to obey. Yeah. So uh, one way I did that with my kids is I would tack on um, yes, ma'am to the end. Now, everybody doesn't say ma'am. That's a very, very Southern thing. Your kids <laughs> do not have to say ma'am and sir, hear me in that. But I am a Southern mama who raised Southern kids. Right. So when I say ma'am, you can just put mom in there, but it's going to very naturally come out of my mouth because, <laughs> you know, I was born and raised in the South. So but I would give those instructions, you know, sweetheart, we're about to go to church in five minutes. Go put your shoes on. Yes, ma'am. Or yes, mom. And just tacking that on encourages them. Okay, I have a choice. I can either obey or disobey. I can say yes, mom and go obey. Or I can not respond and throw a fit and ignore and just not do what mom's telling me to do. So when you do that, you're really presenting them with a choice. And sometimes I would even say that to my kids that, that were really, that were struggling with disobeying. I would say, you know what? You have a choice here. I'm telling you to go put your shoes on. Are you going to obey or are you going to disobey? Put that in front of them. So mm -hmm. they realize that every decision they make, when you give them instruction, they have two choices. They yeah. can obey or they can disobey. So for kids that are really struggling with it, bring that to their attention. You know, you have a choice here. Are you going to obey or disobey? Um, and then always, you know, encourage them with ending that with go put your shoes on. Yes, mom. Or it's time to come to the table for dinner. Yes, mom. Or it's, your, it's time to clean your toys up. Yes, mom. And say that and then require them to come back and say, yes, mom. That lets you know that they understood your instructions. Mm -hmm. It lets them know that they understood your instructions. So they can't say, well, I didn't hear you. And it really makes it a black and white issue of either obeying or disobeying. Yeah. And if they disobey, there should be a consequence and there should be consistency with that. Because if there's not, then they're not going to be consistent in obeying and disobeying. They're going to, kids are gamblers by nature. Yeah. They're, yes, they, they put are. that toe on the line. And they, and <laughs> so they need clear boundaries. And really with boundaries, Yvette, comes freedom. When we yeah. give our children clear boundaries, they have the freedom to choose if they're going to obey, which is going to lead to blessings, um, and if they're going to disobey, which is going to lead to consequences. So really with boundaries come freedom. Absolutely. We tell our girls that all the time. We just had a conversation last night with one of our girls and reminded her once again, sin causes pain, but obedience brings blessings. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it goes from when they're so little that if they obey, you know, oftentimes they'll be rewarded for it. You know, it's not that you don't ever give your kid the sucker. It's that when they obey, sometimes you reward them with the sucker. You know, mm -hmm. I am so thankful that you obeyed mommy earlier. You know what? I want to reward you with a sucker or with a piece of candy or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they understand that they didn't do it for the sucker or the candy, but because of their obedience, they got a reward. But when they disobey, they have discipline and consequences. And the way that that carries into our adult lives, mm -hmm. you and I have seen it. You know, there are so many adults who are living and suffering in pain because they've chosen the wrong thing. Right. And so really this, this whole idea of parenting, all we're doing is preparing our kids for a future adulthood. You know, we're not raising kids, we're raising adults, right? We're raising them into adulthood and we want them to succeed in adulthood. Um, and I don't mean succeed, like have a big house and fancy cars and fancy vacations. I mean, succeed in following the Lord. Mm -hmm. and having blessings upon their lives. And the only way for them to get there is for us to help encourage that as they're young and as they're growing. And so mm -hmm. it's so, so important. So, um, okay. 
So we've talked about bribing, threatening, uh, repeating instructions. What's another um, parenting mistake that we make? Another way, which is four of the six that we're going to talk about, is when we try to appeal to their emotions instead of requiring obedience. And as moms, I think, I don't know, maybe one of the most typical ways we tend to do that is by trying to make them feel guilty. You know, we have mm. this mentality and we may even say it out loud. You know, after all I do for you, this is how you <laughs> repay me. And, you know, as moms, the, the truth of the matter is that we do so much for our kids yeah. and we do make so many sacrifices. So it can be really easy for us to start feeling sorry for ourselves and sure. think that our kids actually owe us obedience. But we want their motives for obeying to come from a heart to please God, not from a parent inflicted guilt trip. Right. And let me just say that putting a guilt trip on our kids, uh, because our kids do love us. And so that might actually sometimes be effective for manipulating their behavior. But even if it does, it stems from a wrong motive. It would be from a motive of people pleasing. And that is not a healthy way to live. Take it from a still recovering people pleaser. (laughs) And, you know, I think a lot of times the temptation to appeal to their emotions and make them feel guilty stems from our own sinful hearts because we're selfish by nature, too. We're tempted to internalize it when our kids choose to disobey our instructions. But here's what we need to understand. When we're being self-focused, we're going to view our kids' disobedience as a sin against us instead of a sin against God. Mm -hmm. And that's a problem. Again, we don't want the motive of our kids to obey to be because it pleases us, because that can cause our kids to develop unhealthy habits that can lead to the emotional bondage of people pleasing. We want to motivate our children to be God pleasers, not people pleasers. Uh, Because we mentioned that verse, I think on Monday, Colossians 3.20, which says, children, obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. That is the right motive that we want to encourage our kids with. Yeah. As you're talking about that, I'm thinking of, you know, I've heard moms say, and I I don't think I've ever said this to my girls, but uh, moms say, you know, if you love me, you'll obey. And that's the same type of thing, you know, and and then they're obeying for the wrong reason, because you know what? They might not always feel like they love you. Right. They might be really angry with you at some point. They're going to be really angry with you at some point because you're going to say or do something that they're not going to like or give them a decision that Mm -hmm. they don't like. And so now, well, they don't need to obey because they don't love you in that moment. You right. Know? That's right. And so, yeah, appealing to emotions is is not something that I've really thought too much about um, as far as, as poor parenting and mistakes that parents can make. Give kind of the flip of that now. So if we're not going to appeal to their emotions, what would, what would we do instead? We teach them scripture. Mm-hmm. You know, why does God want children to obey? Well, it says in the Bible that when children obey their parents, um, it, blessings also come on right. them. And when they don't, consequences come on them. And so not only does it please God, but it also, you know, I would tell my kids, you know, honey, when you disobey me, you're disobeying God right. and it will not go well with you. Yeah, And that's what scripture says. And so I love you too much to allow you to disobey and to live foolishly. I want you to experience all that God has for you. And you're going to be more joyful when you obey. You know, mm-hmm. think about it. Kids who are constantly disobeying their parents and have no self-control, they're not happy kids. Right. They don't enjoy life. And, and nobody, no one around them is happy. That's exactly right. But kids who have been taught to obey mom and dad and to have self-control, they're joyful, happy kids. Yeah. So we're not teaching them to obey just because we don't want them to get on our nerves. We right. want them to enjoy all that God has for them and to honor Him and bring glory to Him in the choices that they make. So th- we can have those conversations with our kids. You know, it's not because I said so. Right. It's because I love you too much to allow you to live foolishly. I want I want God's best for you. I want His will for your life because I love you. Oh, that's such good stuff, Ginger. And, and we've I learned that from you. 18 years ago. And we have used that with our girls over and over and over again. And they know that, you know, they, they know that we love them too much to allow them to disobey. And it's not that we've been perfect in any of it. Um, but man, it is, it is, there is so much reward when we see our kids walking with Jesus mm-hmm. yeah, and so much pain when our kids are not. And mm-hmm. so it's just another For way. For us and them. Yvette. For us and them. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's another way to point them to Christ, even in our discipline. I mean, there are so many opportunities and I I say this all the time, but I just, I can't help but think of the opportunities that we would miss 
in training the hearts of our kids if they were apart from us for, you know, a thousand hours a year, you know, 12,000, 13,000, 14,000 hours out of their childhood. Mm -hmm. That's such a long time. And that's so many missed opportunities because no one else is going to train them like we are. No, no one can, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and no one else will take the time um, to look into the hearts of our kids and to show them Jesus and to work with their own individual struggles um, as kids. So good stuff. Well, we've got more to talk about, but we are out of time right now. We will be back tomorrow to finish talking about parenting mistakes that we sometimes make, or maybe your neighbors make. Uh, Ginger, tell our audience one more time where they can find out more about you. Sure. They can find um, my books, uh, other resources, information about my Parenting with Ginger Hubbard podcast, all of those things at gingerhubbard.com. All right. We'll put those links in the show notes. Stay tuned at the very end to hear a clip of what's coming up next. And remember, you can find all things Schoolhouse Rocked at our website, schoolhouserocked.com. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye. So I never plan on homeschooling. And in fact, our oldest daughter, uh, who is now a mother herself, when she was about three years old, I put her in preschool because I thought that's what we did. When it came time to put her in kindergarten, my husband and I enrolled her in a Christian school because I went to a Christian school. And I think this is where parents, we typically do with our children what our parents did with us. Less is more. They like little bits. They don't like the big, huge handfuls because their mouths are so little. We honestly started homeschooling kind of by accident. I think it's changed pretty significantly. I think we're both far more on board than we were when we first started. At first, I was completely against homeschooling. I felt like that kids needed to go to school to have proper socialization and proper education. And so I had really bought into that myth. We got into homeschooling not because we wanted to. We're kind of the weird people. There's a lot of people who got into homeschooling. They always dreamed about it when they were first pregnant. They were looking forward to homeschooling. Not us. So I'm a little bit maybe unusual. I, I, we moved to really good public schools and then they let me down. Call them accidental homeschoolers or reluctant homeschoolers. Their stories, like ours, weren't that unusual. So many of the families we met never planned to homeschool. It is so much easier. It is so much more peaceful. And it's definitely more biblical. And you know what? If my small child is about to step off the curb into a busy street, I don't want to have to count to three before he obeys. Yeah. God's Word is wisdom. So we need to make sure that the people we're listening to, the people who are encouraging us in our parenting, are depending on the life-giving truths of God's Word to do it. We cannot look to the world. We live in a world now, Yvette, that defies God and His Word at every point, including child training. The world tries to tell us how to parent our children, just like some of these methods that I just mentioned. Those are very popular in the world today. Uh, But Proverbs 14, 12 says there is a way that seems right. Mm -hmm. Some of these methods sound right. They sound good. Yeah. But the scripture says there's a way that seems right, but in the end, it leads to destruction. 